Hi everyone, today I'm going to teach you how to take a photo and turn it into a mock-up where you can replace designs um, and show them off for your listing photos or to send to clients or whatever you want to do. What this is going to do is empower you to make your mock-ups branded to you, make them have the pieces that you want, make them look exactly like you want and not like everything else that every other stationary designer is using. So let's dive in. Hi, I'm Lainey. I'm a wedding invitation designer. I love to teach people how to design wedding invitations and run successful invitation businesses. So if you're interested in becoming a stationary designer, definitely check out Stationery School in the description where you'll get a ton of tutorials uh, and one specific mock-up tutorial that's a lot more robust than this. So I have a ton of pictures that I took for this project that I'm working on with Minted that's going to show a bunch of different envelope liners. I need to do all the listing photos. When I'm taking pictures, I'm keeping a couple things in mind. First of all, I want to be able to recreate this and not have it look completely off. So if every single listing photo you have is exactly the same and then you have one that's even just the slightest bit different because there was different lighting or you didn't have the exact same materials or you put something in a different place, um, it's going to be weird. So in case I need to add something to this collection in the future, I'm paying attention to taking a bunch of different angles and I will use different angles. So even if they have the same uh, pieces or something, if I have to recreate something, it's not going to be like this glaring obvious issue. Another thing that I kept uh, in mind was using this mint green envelope liner that is flood printed. So it's got clear distinctions on all sides between it and the envelope color. Um, you can, I'll show you a little bit about how I would go about changing the envelope color for things digitally because that is an option. However, I prefer to just take pictures of all the different envelopes and then I can choose which one I wanna use for each liner. So I edited all of these in Lightroom. They are pretty much where I want them to be. We're gonna open this particular one with the mid green envelope in Photoshop. Yay, okay. Now the first thing we need to do is just unlock our background layer so that we can edit it. And then we're gonna use our magic wand tool to select everything that is the mint green liner. We're gonna turn our tolerance up a little bit because there's really clear lines between the dark green of the envelope and the light green of the liner. So let's see, so we've gotten pretty crisp lines that way and then we are just going to do layer, new, layer via cut, which is shift control J or shift command J if you're on a Mac. And what we've done is create a layer that is the exact shape of the envelope liner and frankly, this is pretty much all it takes. This is technically a mock-up now. I know it's too easy, but I'll show you how to use it too. So we're gonna go into file and do, I usually do place linked in case I make changes to something, but in this case, you could probably do embedded because most of your designs are already set where they're gonna be. We're gonna select our wildflower wreath liner and it's going to open it as a smart object. So there's a few options here. I usually keep them pretty much as is. This whole piece I know is approximately the width of the liner. So I'm going to go ahead and change this. If you have a liner where placement matters a little bit more, then you can add the template on your file in Illustrator and then it will be here for you to use as a guide. I'm going to uh, make this about this size and since my ratio is locked, I know this is uh, scaled correctly. And then we will just right click and do create clipping mask and that's going to create a clipping mask to the envelope liner shape that you had before and now you can just while you have this uh, wildflower wreath sweet liner layer selected you can move things about change them if the placement is wrong for instance we are kind of centered but we might need to move it down a little bit and the top of that liner usually has this little wispy so this is a good indication of what this liner is going to look like when it's printed and put into the envelope so we started with a JPEG that was flat, that was just this image. We want to keep all of these things where they are so that if we wanted to relink this file to a different liner, it would be really easy to do. For instance, I'm going to select our blue hydrangea and click OK. And as you can see, we do need to adjust a little bit because of the template lines on there, but in general, this is just ready to go. And once we have this kind of perfectly edited. There we go. It'll be really easy to switch things in and out. So that's the power of the mock-up. You can create as many listing images as you want by just switching out this file that is a clipping mask 
to the shape of the envelope liner. So in order to save this file as an actual mock-up, we'll want to save it as the Photoshop file. And so I'll save that as like mock-ups. And what I'm gonna do is say, um, this is mid green envelope A7. That's the type of mock-up it is. It's not the listing photo that we have put with the blue <laughs> with the blue flower in it. So this is the mock-up that we're saving. And we're just saving this as a Photoshop file. And then this file, if it's ready to go, we can do a JPEG version. So that would be a listing photo. And you'd say like, you know, blue hydrangea, A7 mid green, and save this one as a JPEG for listing online. And now we're still here in the mock-up file. So we could really easily just relink this to a different one. We'll do the Bougainvillea save this one as a JPEG and just keep going. I'm also gonna show you a tool that I found um, in a different video for doing all of these all at once, but I wanna show you first how to make the mockups because that can be the most complex part. You could do the same thing, like if you had just a blank white piece of paper, you could cut it out uh, using that magic wand tool in the same exact way we cut out the inside of this envelope and then you could just place your invitation designs on it. So that's how we use mockups to show all of our different designs. One thing that you'll notice is that this is very, very white compared to the white, the slightly softer white of the real photos. So this is something that doesn't matter too much because a lot of people know that this is a mock-up. A lot of people actually can't tell that, uh, but when we're looking at it, we might want to make it a little bit softer. There are so many different ways that you can do this. Honestly, my favorite and easiest one is just to make that layer a little bit less opaque and I think it softens the white a little bit and softens the colors to make them a little bit more realistic as to how they would look in person and kind of matching the colors of these other shades. You could add a mask, you could mess with the uh, hue, saturation, and brightness contrast. There's so many different ways you could do that in Photoshop, but that's my favorite simple way to do that. So then how would I do the envelope. This is going to be a little bit trickier and you'll see exactly why I want to take pictures with the different envelopes and it will be more difficult with an envelope that's not as contrasting from the background. So this background is there's a lot of like creamy white pinkish colors in it. So if you have for instance one of these lighter like this color envelope it's going to be a little bit more difficult. This mist color or the white envelope it's going to be a little bit more difficult. I think it's going to be somewhat easy with the green. So let's see. So we've already cut out this whole middle section. When we use the magic wand tool I took the tolerance down just a tad and we're going to see how well we do with this. You are getting some of those shadows. Um, there's ways to kind of subtract that from the selection. Honestly, what I'm going to do is just grab everything and then take those things out. So we will layer, we'll do a new layer via cut, just like we did before. Great. It does have some of those additional pieces. So I'm going to select those with the rectangular marquee and do our new layer via cut just to make that its own layer and then I'll do it again over here and then these two I will merge back with the um, main piece. So there's a lot of different ways you can do that depending on how familiar you are with the selection tools. I'm not as good at subtracting the selection. Um, so now we just have pretty much this green envelope. Again, this is a mock-up. People know it's a mock-up. So if it's not 100% perfect, it's not the end of the world. Um, but this is why I take the pictures with different colored envelopes because I find it a little bit easier. So with that layer selected, we will do an adjustment layer. We're gonna do hue saturation and use the previous layer to create the clipping mask. And then you, can, you might find that colorize makes this really easy. Um, you might just wanna do it manually there's a lot of different things you can play with here, um, but we're gonna like change the hue. So if I wanted to make this brown, this looks pretty good. I can see a little green right here, but a lot of people wouldn't notice it, or you could definitely work on adding that green into the selection or using the paintbrush tool, you know, to add that in a little bit. We can change it to blue, let's see, change it to like pink. That might require. So when we start playing with the saturation, we get some more patchy results. Um, and when we start playing with the lightness, it just starts to look less realistic, to be honest. The hue is pretty decent, though. 
um, if we did colorize, I might make it a little bit easier to play with in some cases. Yeah, so this is definitely less patchy, still not, you know, not perfect, not as realistic as you would get with just a real different picture of a different envelope. But honestly, this is not too bad. And I think most clients like wouldn't be able to tell or if they could tell would be okay with the fact that this is a mock-up. I would probably fix, go back in and fix this little area right here and maybe on this crease a little bit too. But otherwise, you know, for mock-ups, it's pretty good. And the cool thing about that hue and saturation layer is it didn't change the green of the envelope. Another thing that I often use on my client mockups with a bunch of pieces in it is just the paint bucket tool. So I'm going to select the color of the envelope that I want. Paint bucket, just paint bucket that. It gets rid of like the lines here a little bit. It's not 100% perfect, but if you're doing a mockup with a bunch of different pieces, it does work pretty well. All right, so as a reminder, this is kind of where we started. We separated this layer out and then we're using the clipping mask to insert all of our new designs. In another video, I'm gonna show you a way to do this in bulk so that you don't have to insert and save out for every single one, which is just a huge time saver if you're doing a lot of different listing photos or something at once. I hope this video helped you turn a photo into a usable mock-up for your stationary designs. If you want a little bit more information about this, we have a much larger tutorial as part of Stationery School, our membership just for wedding invitation designers. While you're here, I hope you'll watch some of our other videos and leave us a comment to let us know what you thought. Thanks everyone.